Hi there, here we are heading into module four. So you've learned about probabilities. Now we're, what we're going to do is look at probability distributions. All right, so this week we're gonna look at discrete distributions. And so we're basing this on a random variable. What's the probability you flip a coin and you get heads? And discrete, meaning that they're countable. You can't get one and a half heads, right? And so this week is only discrete, but then the next week we'll look at continuous. And that's very, very important in this course because you're gonna see you're gonna use this, the continuous stuff pretty much to the end of the course. All right, so a distribution, meaning like if you set and you plotted um, the number of times you got heads, you could have a bar graph, right? And so sometimes, versus tails, sometimes a graph is good enough. Um, a lot of times we will put these in a table and then we like to be able to find our measures of central tendency, the mean, the average, and variability, standard deviation. So the mean, a lot of times they call this expected value. What would you expect to get in the long run? Like flipping a coin, you would expect to get heads half the time. This isn't an average formula that you can just use to be able to do this. What you have to do is you have to take each value of your random variable, say like heads, and then times the probability. Okay, so you do this for every single outcome, heads and tails would be easy because there are only two outcomes, and then you add them all up. Then for the standard deviation, notice, and you'll hear in my um, Google Sheets videos, there's two different formats of this formula. I like this one because this helps me see that it is how far away I am from the mean. Now I said standard deviation, this is the variance because we know the standard deviation, you just square root. So what I'm doing is I'm taking each value minus the mean, squaring it, times its probability, and then I add all that stuff up. The binomial distribution by, by far of discrete distributions is used, used the most. Okay, so discrete, countable. You have a certain number of trials they are independent of, of each other. If I flip a coin and I get heads on the first flip, it has nothing to do with my outcome on the second flip. Binomial, two outcomes, success or failure, um, and the probability of success stays the same. Every time you flip a coin, the probability okay, stays the same as one half. And so that's what this is showing here. Is for example, if I flip a coin 10 times and I wanna record the number of heads, then we would call that a success. And since I can only get either a heads or a tail, okay, in this case, we know this would be a binomial. And then we just continue to do this. We repeat this experiment until finally we get through the 10 coin flips. Now notice up here, okay, our random variable. So how many times did we get heads, number of successes in I, I still kind of call this sample size, okay, same thing, but number of trials. P, probability of success. Some websites you will see will use Q for probability of failure, but it's just one minus P. This is the formula. Um, this is definitely why you want to watch my Google Sheets videos because it's kind of daunting, right? But this first piece right here, you should recognize this, right? Combinations, hey, yeah. And then the probability of success to how many successes times the probability of failure to how many failures. Um, the mean of a binomial distribution, pretty easy. You just take the number of trials times the probability of success. The variance, number of trials, probability of success, probability of failures, multiply them. And then standard deviation, square root that. So it says, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, approximately 6% of all workers in Jackson, Mississippi are unemployed. In conducting a random telephone survey in, in Jackson, what is the probability of getting two or fewer unemployed workers? Now, when you take a test, you, you have to figure out how do I even know which formula to use? How do I know this is binomial? I know I hear you. They're either employed or they're unemployed, right? So there's only two things that could actually happen. 
So what I want to do is show this worked out by hand so you can kind of see it. And then, like I mentioned, you're going to want to use Google Sheets. So it says 6% are unemployed. So that's my probability of success. The word success doesn't mean a good thing, right? Unemployed. Um, it says we have a sample of 20. Uh, so 94% are employed. That far is pretty good, right? And X is the number of successes desired. It said two are fewer. So two, one, or zero. So we typically write it out like this. And if you remember when you put the line under it, that's less than or equal to. So that it actually includes two. So how you have to work these is you would have to work probability of zero, probability of one, probability of two, and then you'd add them all up. So either none unemployed or one or two, remember or means to add. And this shows the breakdown of the formula. Okay, so that formula up there. I think it's a good idea to go through this, you know, once or twice maybe, but then you definitely, I mean, there's no way you want to continue to do these by hand, you know, or at least look at the formula to be sure you understand it. Some things to note, zero factorial is one. Anything to the zero power is one. Okay, so just some of those things to remember. And then, of course, you sum all of these, and it gives me what is the probability of getting two or fewer unemployed workers in a sample of 20. How can I find the mean? Take the sample size times my probability of being unemployed. How do I find the variance and the standard deviation? the sample size, probability unemployed, probability employed. And so the big thing, though, is to understand what these numbers mean. So in the long run, I would expect about one person, okay, in a sample of 20 to be unemployed with pretty much, and remember we like the standard deviation because it's the same unit, with pretty much plus or minus one person, 